So for some reason, processing wants to keep exclusive access to the sound card, so you have to stop whatever the heck you're doing in audio elsewhere in order to get a sketch to run. <laughs> what is that supposed to be? Sentry mode activated. <laughs> okay, added a new mode, which is search mode. And it'll also chirp at you if it hasn't found something for a while. So any moment now, it will pipe up and say one of its um, searching words or phrases. Uh, I forget what I configured the... Uh, Hello. Yeah, somewhere between like 10 seconds and 30 seconds, I think, somewhere in there. But yeah, now it searches gotcha. for I see you. faces. Hello. I gotcha. Is anyone there? Sentry mode activated. Hello, friend. Hello. There you are. And I, put, <clears throat> and I put some code in there so that it won't um, um, overwrite the sound, or won't try and play two sound files at the same time, and so that it doesn't crash nearly as badly as it was before. I think there might be a, a crash every once in a while, but uh, it's not too bad at all. So uh, yeah, for the new I also cleaned up the code quite a bit. All right, here's a quick rundown of the changes that I made to the. Um, to the sketch. I um, added some flags to test whether or not we are in the same loop um, and to pop out and whether or not we've played a sound for the deploy or whether we've played a sound for the searching. Um, those we only want to play once and then not every time we go through the loop. I've also made some bounds for the servo positions so that you can adjust the servo bounds um, easily with some parameters because I use those more than once down below. <clears throat> I've got a couple of constants. These are times in seconds because I have added the, um, the uh, ability to randomly play a sound when it's um, been looking for a while. So this is the minimum and the maximum time that you're gonna to use to generate a random number. Convert that to an in integer, and then that's gonna be the time interval that it's gonna be using. And then I initialize things here. So, uh, so yeah, uh, we've also got a couple of pan right and tilt up um, Booleans to tell us whether or not we should be panning right or tilting up. And if not, then we're gonna be panning left and tilting down, obviously. So I did a couple of things. I didn't do anything much to the um, setup loop other than make it nice and um, uh, small by moving comments around. In the, um, in the draw loop though, I did a few, quite a few things. So first off is I used the larger invocation of the detect uh, method in OpenCV. So what this does is it does a number of things. It, can, allows you to adjust the scale factor that it uses for searching in the image. It allows you to um, adjust uh, the number of neighbors to find before it detects a face. It also has a number of different flags. So the flags can change things like the scale factor. If it wants to do something called canny pruning, which is um, to um, get better estimates on the images, the one I wanted was find biggest object. It'll only return one or zero items now. And if it returns one item, it will be the thing that's closest to the camera. So it doesn't get confused with multiple faces anymore. So that is what we're doing here. And then you can play also with the minimum object size you're gonna find and the maximum size of the object that you're gonna find. So it's not gonna look for, if the object it finds is bigger than 300, well, let's put it a different way. It's not gonna look for larger art objects that are larger than 300. So it actually speeds up the algorithm a bit. And it's not gonna look for objects that are smaller than 15. So it's gonna 
you know, trims off how much of the image you're actually going to look at. Um, this actually makes it slower because I think the defaults are 20 in um, in the regular rectangle um, method. Or, sorry, detect method. Now, the other thing that I changed up a bit was some of the comments so that it's a little easier to read. Um, so, we have this go through a loop once if our play start time plus the current sound duration is longer than however millis we are at this point. So I use this pattern quite a bit. So check your time and then I use it. Check your time. Is that um, after we have um, finished playing our current sound? If so, then we can go ahead and play a sound. This is the other pattern that I use. If played deployed sound is false, like if we haven't played our deployed sound, then play it once and then set our played display sound, deploy sound to true. So that means the next time we go through this, if this happens to be true, we won't play a sound again because we've already done that unless we reset this played deploy sound flag. And we reset that flag when we go into our uh, out of our um, faces length zero portion of the loop. We no longer have any faces, so that means that we should reset our played deploy sound to false. I also took all of my tracking code and put that into a procedure down here. So we've got track face and it does the basic things that we were doing before. If, um, if we're above the mid screen, then we tilt um, up and if we're below the mid screen, we tilt down, etc, etc. So all of that is here instead of inside of my main loop so that makes this much easier to read now in if we don't have a face detected now we're gonna do the same sort of pattern here if the current time is after the play last playing start time plus the current sound duration we will play a sound unless we've already played it and it's the random searching sound that we're playing here And then after we've done that once, we also have to start our church chirp timer. We do that once at the beginning. Um, actually, no, we probably eliminate this, but it's, it's working, so I'm not gonna, doing it once is not gonna be a problem because we do it over again down here. Um, so we start the church time chirp timer. We tell our system that we're going to start pan by spanning right and then tilting up. And then we're going to create a new um, face lost time interval by using our max and min values. And then we're going to set our out of range to true so that all of this only gets executed once. And then we are going to search for face. And that also is a procedure. And that procedure, search for face, pans right and left, and then tilts up if it gets to the end, and tilts down if it uh, tilts, and then it tilts when it gets to either end of a row. And so this tilt servo tilt up is also a procedure, tilt servo, so it takes a boolean tilt up. Are we going up or are we going down? And then in here, we will um, change our direction if we hit our boundary. So it's just a, a lot like the um, track face um, method, procedure, in that we do some tilting. And then if we've hit the bounds, we will make note of it. And that is what we return whether or not we're going to tilt up next or whether we're going to tilt down next. So yeah, those are the changes that I made to the code. It should be easier to modify, should be easier to read. At least it is for me. Um, and there it is. It's all up on GitHub. And if you guys want to do some um, additions to that, be my guest. I think I might have invested as much time as I want already on this one. Although, I, yeah, who knows, I might, I might return to it at a later date. But uh, yeah, sure has been fun. Anyways, uh, thanks again for watching, and uh, have, a great, uh, have a great day.